Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again and welcome back to AEL. Now if you're new to this channel, please consider going down below and subscribing if you haven't done so already. Cheers. Well, what we're looking at here is this mysterious 100 nanofarad MKT style capacitor, film capacitor, 100 volt volta that has experienced some sort of failure. Now, for a backstory, I was testing the circuitry of the Elector PA300 power amplifier on breadboard, and this capacitor was one of the 100 nanofarad capacitors across the main supply rails to filter it for high frequency noise to ground. So there was 30 volts going across this capacitor with respect to ground. It came from the same batch of capacitors the rest of the 100 nanofarads on that board were on the same band strip so it's from the same batch and they're all fine this one however has experienced a boo-boo now this is not electrolyte because it's not wet it's solid that looks like the the plastic casing has actually melted and the only way for that to happen is a source of heat. It was sitting near a power resistor but that wasn't getting hot because it was only about 7MA flying through that circuit. So this has to be internal heating and yeah I, I can't think of anything else that could cause the plastic to melt enough to expand outwards and I can see it, but I don't know if the camera can. But if you look closely, there's a little black dot right in the center of that bulge. So there is possibly a hole underneath this bulge. So I'm going to take a file to this and file off this extremity here and see if it opens up uh, the hole underneath the little hole that I can see the black spot and um, yeah because I have measured this capacitor it still measures 100 nanofarad within you know plus minus 20 percent tolerance that's fine but obviously this capacitor is done and is not trustworthy in any circuit so yeah, I'm going to take a little file and just file off the top surface of this and see what it reveals. Because I could cut it open like with a Dremel or something, but that's destructive and may cause more damage than we can actually see anything viable. So let me grab a file and get to work on this. I was thinking about putting this into a circuit to test it, see if it's actually getting hot like having like two relays, two 12 volt relays in series, drawing about 70 MA on 24 volts uh, with the capacitor across the relay coil just to see if, you know, it is getting hot. In fact, I might do that first. First though, I'm going to measure what its capacitance actually is today because this has been sitting around on the desk for a month not doing anything. Um, I did want to actually explore a little bit more in depth what this problem with this capacitor is and as we can see 101.4 nanofarads so it's still capacitating so yeah I might set up a quick circuit with two 12 volt relays in series okay so I've got the capacitor sitting in a breadboard just to make things easier and it's not connected to the relays yet but I've got the power supply hooked up across it at a 100 MA current limit at roughly 22 volts, well 22 volts exactly according to that. Now when this capacitor charges there should be no current draw except maybe a few microamps just to maintain the charge. So I want to do this unloaded first. Right well it jumped up to about 54 MA and then not much else has happened. We've got no current draw as I previously stated. So I'm just going to touch the capacitor and I can't feel any any warmth in it mm. 
Mm, hard to tell. So I'm going to load it and put some current through it, well not through it, across it, uh, via the two relay coils. There they are sitting there, so I need two fly wires and I'll connect one end there. I'll connect the other end over there. Nothing's happening. So I'll connect one to the positive and the other ones to its negative. Relay's engaged. Hmm, there's more like 22 MA there instead of what I was expecting. Although the effective coil resistance has actually doubled, not halved, so therefore the current is lower. Which yeah, would make sense. So as to what this capacitator is doing, nothing. Absolutely diddly squat. So yeah, that is completely weird. Alright, so I'll leave that run for a bit. I mean, I could put a resistive load across the power supply instead of the relays to up the current. Alright, I've got a 330 ohm 5 watt resistor across the supply which is going to get fairly warm and we're drawing more like 62 MA which is a little bit better. I would have liked it to be a little bit higher but I don't really want to stress the power supply. Although I can probably up the voltage now. to 30 volts. Now this test is probably not going to prove anything and currently no that's not even getting hot which it shouldn't so it's not even getting warm the resistor obviously is that is perfectly cool as it should be so I mean I when I was testing the amplifier with this in circuit, we were probably drawing around about the 88 milliamp mark to 100 milliamp mark anyway. So that's what this would have been experiencing. But yeah, it's not. Nothing's happening. Nothing that I can feel anyway. Okay. I'm going to let that run for 5 minutes and see what happens. So, 5 minutes later, still at 30 volts, 88 MA, 2.6 watts. Nothing is happening. That capacitor is stone cold. The only thing heating up is that resistor. Pretty, pretty red hot. So I'm going to kill the power supply before I kill the resistor. So the next thing for this is to file it down, as I said I was going to do in the beginning. Open it up see if that hole opens up, which it probably would, and that is completely cold, so, well, at room temperature. So as this capacitor is only worth about 10 cents in bulk pricing, it's going to be thrown out anyway, so there's no real great loss here. So I'm going to that's definitely plastic I can see the little spot opening up. This is awfully difficult to do. And I seem to have filed the spot off now. That's interesting. Well, I've just filed that flat and that black spot, which must have been part of the plastic, is no longer there. There is no hole there. It was just, you know, whatever was on the surface. And there still appears to be plenty of, like, material, plastic-wise, there. And I can't see any physical hole there, so the mystery intensifies. Which is kind of annoying, because I would have thought, okay, there goes my free spray. I would have thought, okay, um, it's got a hole in it, and it's puking its guts out, but apparently not. So I just looked at this under a magnifying glass, and no, there is no hole there, so, hmm. 
and there's plenty of material there and it's perfectly flat. So yeah, that really is kind of confusing as to where that material came from. So unless anybody has any other ideas to where that extra bonus material came from, please let me know because I have absolutely no clue. It's still a complete mystery. No, it didn't come into contact with the soldering iron and no, nothing dripped on it. And also no, there was nothing on the body of this capacitor when it was installed. So, as far as I know, there was nothing on the body of this capacitor when it was installed. I just installed it, I didn't really examine it. I mean, it's possible it could have actually been on there from manufacturer. Like, it's possible, maybe it's some form of glue that got dropped on it, or what I'm thinking actually it might have been. These capacitors are what is known as potted. That is, there is epoxy injected, I suppose for a better term, inside the plastic casing to hold the whole thing together. So, whether that was like leftover epoxy during manufacture that spilt on the side of the capacitor in the machine before it was banded, I don't know, but I would have expected that I would have noticed, you know, a large bit of epoxy stuck to the side of the capacitor like that in the packet. <laughs> you tell me, but it's possible that that is epoxy rather than plastic. Because examining the dust that's on the file there, that does not look very much like the same grey plastic that it uh, is on the actual capacitor. Now that feels very gritty. Yeah, that feels like epoxy. Hmm. I reckon that's what it was, was epoxy. Where it came from, bug it if I know. Well, obviously there's nothing physically wrong with this capacitor, so that means it could probably still be used in something. I'll keep it knocking about for testing in test circuits, but I probably wouldn't put it on a PCB. In fact, just so I know not to put this on a PCB, I'll put a large black dot on either side of it. That way I know that that was the suspected faulty component. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. I didn't really prove anything, nor did I find out really definitively what that issue was. I reckon, as I said, it was epoxy, but leave your thoughts below. Have you ever seen that before? But as there's no physical hole in the capacitor, I'm going to say the capacitor's fine. I'm the Astro30, and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to go down below, like, comment and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And as always, this is the Astro30 saying, see ya. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.